Hi there. If you're anything like me, sometimes you really struggle to work out what people see in you. Like, seriously. Um, <laughs> when you've got mental health and physical health issues, sometimes they really blind you to what you are really like. You just see the flaws and what holds you back and the brain weasels kick in and, you know, all of that stuff. And it can be really difficult to see why people keep hanging around. Um, and I could go into the psychology of it and Jakari's window and blah. That's maybe for another video if you're interested. But what I'm going to do is talk you through a practical way that you can decode what other people think about you. Um, so what I want you to do is go through your messages. I find this easier with text messages or text-based messages, so DMs or PMs or texts or online interactions. What I want you to do is pick people that you have chosen, um, people that you talk to often, and I want you to put them in one list. And then I want you to make a second list, people that you admire and respect. Now, you may not speak to those people as often as your chosen and often uh, list, but these are all important people. These people inform who you are. They are part of who you are and what you want to strive to be, right? So, I want you to pick one of those people. Doesn't matter who, doesn't. And I want you to spin the wheel. So go into that message from that person and flick. And wherever it lands, go to the start of the nearest conversation. And I want you to read it with the following things in mind. Now, I will say this is going to take practice. You may have an epiphany moment doing this today, but you'll need to come back to it in a week, a month, a year. It doesn't matter. Every now and again, we need to do this little audit. Um, so save this video to your watch later list and come back to it in six months um, and do it again. Because this is a really handy way to see outside of yourself. So we're going to decode some of the behaviours that we get in um, these kind of messages. Um, so I want you to have a look. Who started that conversation? Was it you or them? It doesn't really matter who started it, but did it start organically? Did it flow organically? Um, and what I mean by that is if they started the conversation, what did it just feel natural? Same with you starting a conversation with them. Um, because what we're saying in that interaction, because a relationship is two ways, um, what we're saying in that interaction is this person means something to us. Whether they contacted you first or you contacted them first, you matter. Both of you matter in this relationship. And that's really important. That is the building block of any relationship. Do they check in on you? As you're scrolling through, if there's a gap in the conversation, do they come back to it? Um, when they're able to. We're not judging people on getting busy and coming back to things later. But, you know, if there's a gap of, of a few days, do they check, check in on you? Do you check on in on them? Um, is it just a natural, hey, I haven't spoken to you for a couple of days. How are you doing? Because if that's the case, they're thinking about you outside of themselves it's really easy to get tunnel vision when it comes to our lives we all get busy and before we know it a week's gone past so they've thought about you something in their brain has gone oh i didn't get back to you, that person or um you know oh i wonder how they're doing last time i spoke to them this thing was happening and it was great or it was bad i ought to check in on them um, do they come to you for advice and information? Do they ask you to weigh in or educate them on something? Because that's what they're doing. 
when people ask for advice, they are asking you for your opinion, your insight, your knowledge. They're telling you that you are smart and intuitive, that you are emotionally mature. They've come to you with a problem and they trust you with that problem. Now, of course, some people don't listen to advice and we've all got that friend who asks everyone for advice and then goes off and does whatever they want anyway. But as a general rule, we will only ask advice from someone we think can actually add value to our situation. And that's what someone's doing when they're asking you for advice or information. If someone comes to you with a question, it's because they believe that you have knowledge that they don't. You have expertise. You have emotionally, uh, emotional maturity, you have insight, you have empathy and compassion, and you can approach something from a different point of view. That's what they see in you in that moment. That's what they're reminded of in that moment. Um, do they empathize with you? Now, this isn't just when something bad happens, but if you're really happy about something and you share that news, do they empathize with that? Do they cheer you on and be happy for you genuinely? Do they commiserate with you when something bad happens? Do they offer up a little piece of themselves so that you know it's normal? Do they validate your feelings? Because if they do, they care. They genuinely care about how you are feeling. You are not an extra in their life. They are taking a moment out to celebrate or commiserate. And that's really big. You are worth their time. You are worthy. And they care. Do you commiserate with them? Do you empathise with them? Do you cheer them on? Because that's a two-way street. That's what friends do. We support each other, good and bad. Do they share cute photos of their family or stories about their family and close friends with you? Because that's them inviting you into their family. That's them saying you are chosen. I want to share this, this secret moment that happened. They don't have to do that, but they are saying, I am inviting you in. I want you in my life. You are important to me. You bring value to me. Um, do they remind you of your achievements? Now, I'm not talking academic success or big promotions, although that is part of it. But do they remind you of that time that you dove in front of a car to help an old lady across the street? Do they remind you about that time that you cooked a meal for 40 people on a shoestring budget? Do they um, remind you of that time you stopped someone choking? Do they remind you of the little things? It doesn't have to be a big thing, but the little things you do that is achieving. Hey, do you remember that blanket you made? Hey, do you remember that weather vane you made? That's them remembering your achievements. That's them celebrating those achievements. That's them believing in you. Um, it's such an important part of relationship building is actually listening. And that's what they've done. They've listened to a story that you've told or whatever else. And they've reminded you of that at a pertinent moment. Um, not only are you important, but your life is important to them. Important enough for them to remember stuff. I can't remember where I put my pen, let alone, you know, my own achievements. So to have someone tell me that story or remind me of that story is such a big boost. Someone has taken the time to remember that because they think that that is part of who you are. That's part of what makes you you. That's part of what makes you wonderful and unique. 
and important. Um, do you uh, get silly together? Do you have a running joke, an inner in joke um, that no one else gets, but you find hilariously funny? Are you able to poke fun at each other and it just be good natured and fun? Do you carry on each other's jokes? Does it become a giggle fest? Because that's them saying you are funny. That is them saying they enjoy you. All of these things, and this is not an exhaustive list. There, there are loads of these. And I want you to go through those messages and really look at what they're saying. Look at, if, if you were to say that to them, what would your meaning be? Because nine times out of 10, that's what their meaning is. And I'm not talking about flattery. Flattery can come across as really insincere. Um, see my video about why people lie. Um, you know, flattery feels like someone's just trying to make us feel better. Um, and it can be really hard to accept it. But what I'm talking about is not the outright flattery. Although it's nice to be told that you're kind or you're smart or whatever. It's about the hidden meaning. The underlying meaning. It's not hidden. But the underlying meaning of them checking in on you. And them asking for advice or talking about your achievements or treating you like you are an equal, involving you in in-depth conversations about something, inviting you to communities. If you've got a friend that has invited you to a community, it is because they want you to enjoy whatever that community has to offer. The knowledge, the fun, the interaction. But not only that, here's the secret behind someone inviting you to something, whether it's a social event or a community or an online thing, doesn't matter. If someone invites you, they are inviting you because not only you're going to get something out of it or they think and or they think you've got something to contribute, but also they believe in you. You're not going to go in there and make a fool of yourself or them. They are putting their reputation on, on the line Yay! to invite you in. Your behaviour re reflects on them, whether we realise that or not, whether that is a conscious thought or not in that person's mind. That is what they're doing. So these are your affirmations. These, this is what people see in you. You are an equal, you are smart, you are funny, you have insight, you're emotionally available, you're emotionally mature, you um, both validate each other's feelings and you commiserate and you commemorate and you celebrate together um, because you matter. Those are your affirmations. This is what that group of people that mean something to you are saying. And the reason I want you to pick people that mean something to you is because what they think matters more than someone that eh, is, is kind of on the outskirts of your normal social circle. Um, it's not because you don't like them. You just don't know them as well as these people that are your chosen and often and your um, admired and respected lists. Decode that language. Because that's what they see in you. They see you as trustworthy and fun, smart, unique. That you made achievements and positive outcomes for others those that's what people see in you take a moment to let that kind of sink in have a think about it practice you may not see it the first time you may not see it with one individual you may have to go through a few and find those common denominators for me it's when i get multiple people who say to me you know, can you answer this question on this subject? That's cool. You know, people people know me for having that experience. 
And that's really nice. That's validating my intelligence and validating the fact that I can repeat that knowledge in a way that they're going to get. I like the idea of helping people learn. And I like being needed. That makes me feel really happy. Or when someone tells me that they got something out of one of these videos that it, I reached through the screen and got them in the feels because they saw something from a different point of view. They feel seen, they feel validated. I'm having a positive effect. If you take the time to decode what someone is saying to you in just normal everyday interactions, you will see what people see in you that you can't see right now. And the more you practice this, the more comfortable you will get. And it's okay to not be comfortable right now, but the more comfortable you will get and the more you will see it as those conversations happen. Now, I still struggle with it. Maybe it's something I'll always struggle with, but this really helps me ground myself when those negative thoughts and my physical health stops me from feeling like a whole person. Okay, feel free to save this video to your watch later list so you can come back to it and refresh your memory or write down what you need to write down from this one because it's a little bit of a long one there's a few steps but let me know in the comments let me know in the comments if this has helped give it a thumbs up and tell me if it helped if you need any help decoding a um a message from someone let me know you can email me craftalytical at gmail.com you can get hold of me on twitter at craftalytical uh, or you can leave it in the comments if you feel um, kind of confident enough and I will help you. Now, obviously, this is based on good faith relationships. I can't ascribe um, kind of motives to someone who you think might be being a bit sinister. I can't do that. But if a good friend of you has sent you something, and you're like, I, I can't work this one out. Let me know. I'm here to help. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, hopefully, I will see you in the next one.